What's up guys, Rogue9 here. I have spent quite an amount of time analysing the new calibre based destruction in Rainbow Six Siege, and I can finally say that I have some results to share with you. So let's get straight to it. As many of you will already know, this is not the first video analysing the new destruction capability of weapons in Rainbow Six Siege. Cole Ross was far more efficient than me with his work, and he has a great video out demonstrating the practical breaching capabilities of various weapons, and if you haven't seen it yet, his analysis is definitely worth your time, and I'll have a link at the end of my video to take you straight there. But first, let's take a look at what I've been able to come up with. If we look at Ubisoft's patch notes on the calibre-based destruction, it's the last sentence that gives us the best indication of the changes we can expect. Here, the announcement claims that stronger calibers will create bigger bullet holes and generate larger impulses. So we really have two fundamental changes to the way bullet holes are generated in the game, and I've decided to split these two topics up into separate videos, so in this video I will be focusing on the caliber based bullet hole size. Here's a quick reminder of how bullet holes used to work. And while that's running in the background, let me give you a quick overview of how I'll be analysing the new bullet hole mechanic. The first step in achieving this will be to take a closer look at the various calibers represented in the game, and then I will conduct trials with each weapon to check if the new in-game bullet holes accurately reflect the calibre of each weapon. There are a total of 13 different calibers represented in Rainbow Six Siege, and I've taken some care over sizing the images of the bullets you see on screen right now to give you a relatively accurate representation of their relative scale. The largest group of calibers is the pistol ammunition that you can see on the left, and here we have the 9x18mm bullet, 9x19, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP, 4.6x30mm, 5.7x28mm, 357 Magnum and 50 Action Express. The next group shows the rifle ammunition, and here we have 5.45x39mm, 5.56x45, 7.62x51 and 7.62x54 rimmed. Last but not least, we have the 12 gauge shotgun cartridge used by all of the shotguns in the game. Now let's take a look at which weapons these different bullets belong to. Starting on the left with the pistol ammunition, we can definitely see that the 9mm is the most common calibre used by many of the pistols and quite a lot of the submachine guns. Almost all of them use the 9x19mm round, with the only exception being the PMM, and this weapon uses the slightly smaller and slightly less powerful 9x18mm round. Looking at the higher powered pistol ammunition, we can see that the most common one is the 45 ACP, used by the UMP45, the M45 and the SMG11, and the next common one is the 5.7x28mm FN round, used by the P90 and the 5.7 USG, while the remaining calibers are used by a single weapon only. The LFP586 uses the 357 Magnum, the new P229 uses 40 Smith & Wesson, the D50 uses 50 Action Express and the MP7 uses the 4.6x30mm round. Next up we have the small rifle bullets, and here we can see that the only gun to use the 5.45x39mm round is the AK-12. All other weapons use the more common 5.56x45mm round, and here we have the M249 machine gun and a whole bunch of assault rifles, the Type 89, the L85, the 556XI, the Org A2, the R4C, the 552 Commando, 416 Carbine, the AR-33, the G36, the C8 and the F2. The two larger rifle calibers are used by the battle rifles, the designated marksman rifles and some of the machine guns in the game. 7.62x51mm is more common and is used by the Kammers, the 417, the SR25, the Mark 17, the G8 and the Para 308. 7.62x54 is used by Tachanka's mighty DP28, the OTS-03 SVU and the 6P41. As mentioned before, all the shotguns in the game use the same 12 gauge cartridge. So now that we have an overview of all the different calibers, let's look at the experiment I conducted in the game. It was really quite simple. Find a wall, rub my nose up to it, and then fire a single shot at eye level. Take a screenshot of this bullet hole and repeat for each and every weapon in the game. Luckily, this was not tedious at all. 
and the results are in. I discovered a total of five different bullet hole sizes for regular weapons and three different sizes for the shotguns. An interesting side note here is that I have found out that each different weapon can actually generate two slightly different types of bullet hole. So for instance bullet holes in the large category can either be 89 or 93 pixels across and I was able to confirm that the weapons across all of the different categories can randomly generate either the slightly smaller or the slightly larger hole. Another interesting thing to note here is that you can always tell a shotgun impact from a regular bullet impact by looking at the shape of the hole. Regular bullet holes are octagonal while shotgun bullet holes are hexagonal. This has no practical impact on the gameplay but interesting to know anyway I guess. Let's start off with the very large bullet hole category. These holes can be created by three different weapons, the DP-28, the D-50 and the OTS-03 SVU. And that makes perfect sense, we have two weapons that use the largest rifle caliber represented in the game and we have a pistol that uses the largest pistol caliber in the game. The only weapon missing in this category is the Russian machine gun, the 6P-41. And I think the reason we don't see this weapon included in this category is the in-game balancing. This machine gun only does 39 points of damage per shot. And even though from a real-world caliber perspective it should make the same holes as for instance the DP-28 or the OTS-03, I can fully understand that this wouldn't really gel with the in-game balancing, so it makes sense to leave this weapon out of this category. Looking at the large bullet hole category next, we can see that this category includes all of the 7.62mm rifles, as well as the 357 Magnum pistol round. And again here, I would say that the game does a pretty good job at reflecting reality. The only two questionable weapons in this category are the M249 and the Type 89, both of them using the 556x45 rifle cartridge. And again, I think this is quite a purposeful mistake to match the way that the guns work in the game more closely. The M249 machine gun is very similar to the Russian 6P41, so it makes sense that these two would be in the same category, and the Type 89 only has a magazine capacity of 20 bullets, which means the gun sort of plays more like the battle rifles in the game rather than the assault rifles. The next hole size is the medium size, and these holes are predominantly generated by weapons firing the small rifle ammunition 5.56x45 or the Russian 5.45mm equivalent, and we also have some representatives of the higher powered pistol ammunition group. And these weapons are the UMP-45, the P-90 and the MP-7. And I have to say that I think the P-90 and the MP-7 probably belong in smaller hole categories given the small size of the projectiles they fire. I get that these weapons are modelled as primary weapons for the defenders, but since most of the other machine pistols used by defenders have been placed in a different group, I think it would have also made sense to take these two weapons and place them there as well. Apart from the P90 and the MP7, there are only two real surprises in this group and that's the Louison, which is basically Cavera's modified PRB92, and we have the MP5 SD. I think I can safely say that the Louison makes perfect sense in this group since it has a special in-game balancing, but I can't really explain why the MP5 SD would be in this group and the other MP5 versions would not be. Including the MP5 SD doesn't make sense from a real world perspective since it only fires the 9x19mm pistol round and it also doesn't really make much sense in terms of in-game balancing since the gun only has a maximum damage capacity of 23 points compared to let's say the regular MP5 which does 33 points of damage. And speaking of MP5, that really brings us down to our next category of bullet hole, I'm gonna call it the SMG category. This category, unsurprisingly, contains a lot of the 9x19mm SMGs as well as a couple of pistols with higher calibre. These being the P229 which fires the 40 Smith & Wesson and the M45 firing 45 ACP. This category also contains the PMM which doesn't really make much sense in terms of the real world calibre but once again comes at no real surprise given the weapon's in-game balancing. Last and least we have the smallest holes in the pistol category and here we find the remaining 9mm pistols as well as the 5.7 USG. 
The only outlier in this group for me is the SMG-11. It's an SMG with a somewhat longer barrel than most pistols and it fires the 45 ACP, so I definitely think this gun should be in a category of larger bullet holes, especially considering that the Bearing 9 is in the SMG category. But I'm being quite picky here, out of the 48 weapons I've covered so far, it's only the P90, the MP7, the MP5 SD and the SMG11 that I really think are in the wrong category. Everything else pretty much makes sense, especially when you consider the in-game balancing. And to wrap this up, let's take a closer look at the bullet holes created by the various shotguns. Since all shotguns in the game fire the 12 gauge cartridge, they should technically make very similar, if not the same, holes. But I suppose from a balancing perspective, I can accept that the mass is in a category of its own. Since the mass is primarily a breaching gadget rather than a weapon, I can accept that it makes significantly larger holes than the other shotguns, even though it uses the same ammunition. The remaining shotguns are split into two different groups, the pump action group and the semi-automatic group, with the pump action group making slightly larger holes than the semi-automatic. Does this make sense in terms of the caliber? Of course not. But once again, I can accept for the reasons of balancing that the slightly slower firing pump action shotguns should have an advantage in the hole size they generate over the semi-automatic versions. Well, all of that is kind of interesting, but where's the in-game application? I guess knowing which guns create what size of hole in the wall isn't that important, but it can still be useful. If you're trying to create a subtle hole in the wall that will allow you to peep through and hold an angle while still keeping you hidden, it could be useful to know what size of a hole the weapon you're currently using will generate. Although that's kind of a niche application, so I guess this video is more interesting than useful. I've already started working on the second video, which will be taking a closer look at the mysterious impulses mentioned in Ubisoft's patch notes. And from the results I've gathered so far, I think I can safely say that the information in that video will be slightly more useful. No guarantees though. In the meantime, as I mentioned at the top of the video, you will find a far more practical analysis of the new caliber-based destruction model over on the Core Ross channel. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link on screen now, so why not go and check it out? Feel free to subscribe to see my future videos, and as always, I hope you like this video, and I will see you in the next episode. That's if I didn't bore you to death with my pointless fluff just now.